Hi, it's Matt from Go Green Auto. So in this video, we're going to look under the bonnet and underneath this Peugeot Partner electric fan. So under the bonnet, what we get is your electric motor. I believe this is um, made by Mitsubishi or it's a joint project with Mitsubishi because of course PSA Group, Citroen and um, Peugeot partnered with Mitsubishi and they rebadged the Mitsubishi iMeve as either a Citroen C0 or a Peugeot Ion. And um, I think the PSA group also partnered with Mitsubishi to electrify the partner van. So um, there is a bit of Japanese writing on the stickers and there's a sticker on the side here um, showing the brand uh, Yazaki. Um, so yeah, clearly Japanese. Uh, and, and it's very reliable in these, as it is in the iMove, um, very reliable drivetrain. So what we basically got, this is your motor stack. So at the bottom there will be the electric motor driving the front wheels directly, and then everything else mounted in these aluminium um, carcasses is your all your electronics, your charging systems and your inverter. And then everything that's orange is the high voltage cables. So that will be the cables coming from the charge port and uh, obviously coming from the 400 volt lithium ion battery pack. And then all of this stuff is also water cooled as well. So we've got a radiator down here and uh, the grill is actually blanked off at the front, but we've got a little bit of um, a few slots there and a few down under there. So you don't need much cooling on an electric car, of course. And uh, the, the electronics is cooled and also uh, the electric motor is probably cooled, but I haven't had a look at underneath one of these yet. So here is your 12 volt battery. All EVs have a 12 volt battery and this is exactly the same battery that you would get on a diesel model. But obviously that battery isn't turning over an engine. In reality, these batteries are far too big uh, for what you need for an EV, but they use standard components. So what that battery does is it runs all the electrics, your lights, your wipers, your stereo, your dash, and all the ECUs in the car, because there's obviously many ECUs, and it's all standard 12 volt stuff. And an EV is completely reliant on that battery to start, just like it is with a, um, an ICE vehicle. So when you start up, this battery obviously isn't turning over an engine, it's just switching on all the ECUs and flicking on relays. But if that battery is flat, the vehicle won't start. And then what else we've got under here? We've got the fuse box, brake fluid. We've got um, windscreen washer fluid. This is our fluid for the cooling system. And uh, we've got the air conditioning hoses and things down there. So in a second, we'll lift it up and have a look underneath. But before I do that, I'll quickly explain the charging. So this is your um, filler cap that uh, you would have on a diesel van but obviously on the electrics um, we've got no fuel so they put the DC Chadamo port behind here this is a 50 kilowatt rapid charging port so this is what you would use when you're doing a long distance trip and you would get that sort of 30 minute rapid charge and then here on the driver's front wing is your AC charging port so this is a tight one 16 amp 3.6 kilowatt ac charging so this is what you'd use for um, typically get overnight charging or top ups throughout the day and this is the only panel that they change compared to the uh, petrol or diesel models they obviously integrate this flap into this front driver's wing obviously the rest of the van is standard diesel uh, van components uh, suspension all the body shell seating everything else absolutely no different to the diesel so let's have a look underneath this has got a 22 and a half kilowatt hour battery pack and the battery is split into two sections so one is here at the back where your spare wheel would normally mount behind the rear wheels and the other one is directly in front of the rear wheels and it's here under this plastic cover but actually only comes to here so there's our doors so yeah both are very small sections and if I get underneath there there's not much to see because of course it's all covered in plastic so there's your rear axle effectively and there's your second battery pack and the rest of it is um, just flat floor there's our steel floor we've got a bit of um, plastic covering there I'd imagine that's covering the cables, which is then going to the electric motor at the front. So looking underneath at the front, 
we can see here the electric motor this huge block here we've got a pipe here which is obviously the water cooling and um, here's our dry shafts here driving the front wheels one there and one there and electric cars don't have gearboxes because you only need a gearbox because of the inefficiencies of a combustion engine but instead you have a little you do have a tiny little transmission all it is is a reducing gear um, so there's no sliding gears or anything like that in there it's a very simple little sealed system because it's I assume it's just reducing the speed of the motor down for the uh, drive shafts there and then here that looks like your air conditioning compressor and then here we've just got various hoses little water pump there pumping the cooling around but as I said the rest of it's all standard um, partner stuff all standard uh, diesel components your anti-roll bar here your drop links and all your suspension no different to the diesel models and then if I just turn around to the front we can see here the radiator and I would think that's much smaller than a normal combustion engine radiator I'd imagine the normal one would fill the full width here which has got a black plastic blanking panel there very fine mesh on it as well um, but yeah small radiator at the front which is obviously then cooling your coolant which is cooling the electric motor um, yeah there's the hose into the motor and then your circuitry above so what's surprising on this is that they've fitted the battery pack in the two voids at the back where your spare wheel would have gone and your fuel tank and the exhaust so it's all up high so it doesn't reduce the ground clearance at all whereas many other EVs where they use the standard body shell the battery does hang lower and does reduce your ground clearance but on the partner you've still got exactly the same clearance because the battery is all hooked up underneath all it's added is um, three quarters of an inch or so because your battery pack is at the rear you've got that one section directly behind the rear wheels and that other section there and then you've got the electric motor and all the other stuff in the engine bay at the front you've got that perfect 50 50 weight distribution which obviously cars try to achieve but obviously with a van you're not going to be tearing around you're not going to see any real advantage of that but yeah quite a nice solution a lot of people don't realize these vans are available as electric and in this case in the partner they have been since 2013 but because they use the same body shell as the diesel one um, they you just don't know they're electric and people just don't realize these are on the roads unless you notice that full electric badging there which is hard to read um, maybe that uh, charge flap on the front wing and the fact there's no exhaust pipe at the back you know you wouldn't notice these are electric and of course they're very minor things to uh, spot but if we look at the back of this we've still got the cutout here on the rear bumper for the exhaust pipe and of course we've still got the mounting brackets there to hang the rear exhaust um, but yeah it just like the kangoos um, unless you know those little things to look out for you really wouldn't know that these vehicles are electric and on the partner electrics you do get this extra badging on the front doors but of course most people wouldn't know what that meant i hope you found the video useful and if you have liked it please do click the thumbs up button on youtube because that allows other people to find the videos and maybe subscribe to the channel because that helps the youtube algorithms because i do get very small viewing numbers on these videos but on the channel there's plenty of other ev related content but I will keep plodding on and making more videos all about electric vehicles.